hello and namaste and welcome to uh, the course on uh, geographic information system this is about the module 7 yeah, till now uh, when we started our journey uh, from the real world we actually started it from if uh, if we look at uh, uh, we started it from the real world we started uh, looking at how we collect data how we integrate data now once you have the data in your hand how do we actually store it in a database how do we retrieve in a database and what are the different databases that are there and finally how do we process it to form information that is what uh, we would be uh, learning about the in this particular module and to be very specific we would learn what is a database so once the data comes in how do we store it how do we retrieve it and most importantly what are the different ways of storing it different databases that are there and uh, if uh, if time permits we'll also look at what are the languages that are uh, being used uh, in order to uh, manage this uh, database or query this data uh, data from the database so this is what we would learn in this particular week and the next week so both of the these weeks would be packed with databases so and uh, probably in the last week you have also heard about uh, QGIS the introduction to QGIS oh, uh, Prakash uh, did, uh, did speak about wha what is QGIS how uh, QGIS evolved over a period of time and he did show you some uh, tools that ex exist in uh, quantum GIS so uh, if uh, if you can start looking at those tools if you have downloaded QGIS or uh, in the practical session they uh, my uh, TAs would also show you uh, how do you download how do you utilize uh, uh, the QGIS for uh, analysis of data but if you can download QGIS and start looking at it probably database would make more uh, sense in terms of how it is implemented. So uh, in this class we would uh, look at uh, the concepts for the first and very foremost concept is data what do you mean by a data and what do you mean by information and most of the time most most students uh, term data and information to be the same no data is different information is different so uh, we look at what is data what is information what's the difference between both of these then database features if you want to have a database so what are its features then we would look at GIS geographic aspect or the geographic angle of the database how it actually differs from a normal database then uh, we would also look at if there are any advantages disadvantages of a database if there are advantages what are those advantages and how it may help us in uh, uh, bettering ourselves in terms of maintaining the files so entire entire in, instead of maintaining hard files how do we actually maintain a database so that it would help we most of us today uh, have uh, access to the at least uh, most of them who are taking up this course i would not say all but most of them have an access to the digital access to uh, most of the ticketing system banking system etc so those are also uh, 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 have developed over the databases itself the communication of data database and as information so all of this put together also is a database so in fact most of us are looking at everyday activity in terms of a database itself so uh, let us learn some of these so the this particular uh, session now the the next two modules are just an uh, basics of a database it is for the, uh, it is uh, targeted to those people who are understanding gis and those who do not understand even the basics of a database for people who want to learn advanced data databases i would suggest uh, them to take up the course which is uh, uh, completely dedicated to how the database what is a database and how does it work so more of that terms but this is just a basic just a give to just to give you a brief flavor of how the database works so uh, so that it's easier to understand when you are implementing it on uh, using a gis software so as I said, when we come to uh, something called as a data and information, so now uh, you go to the field, you have your GPS in your hand, you go to a field, you collect the data. Now you come back, you come back and these will be a series of information that is collected. So maybe that you have gone around the entire city, collected uh, uh, the footprints of various buildings, looked at different aspects and recorded all of those. 
So, data is nothing but you have collected a series of facts that can be uh, either sorted or processed or even recorded. Okay, it can finally once it is processed it can be even stored. So, uh, when we define data it is the one that is collected uh, based on facts, phenomena or any of those aspect that can be collected, stored, processed and recorded. Data is actually a collection of values, collection of values. It may be based on perception, it may be based on various other various other issues, but these are the collection of values that uh, uh, may be in the form of a, a collected or it is from the perceived data. But when data gets organized okay, and processed, it becomes information. So now you have data. Okay, let us say that you have collected all the points in your GPS, you come back to your lab, okay. then you start working on you import all those points in, uh, into your uh, computer system. Once you have imported all the points, then you will start looking at uh, what are the different features. Maybe you have a background as a Google map or, a, or any of those reference values. So now, what you will try to do is that you will uh, start digitizing these points and say that this is what I have collected, this is what is the quantitative value, this is a qualitative value. Okay. Once you have collected it, you will process to obtain certain information out of it. Maybe using a raster processing, uh, using some, uh, some other uh, raster data, satellite data or any other data. Okay, you just uh, uh, get some values out of it, a quali qualitative or quantitative information and you process that information. Now that becomes an information, once you have processed it, it becomes an information. So those uh, are the values which are stored as information. Okay. So when, uh, the, uh, when this information is processed, normally it gives a generalized conclusions. So you should be very specific. So you, not always in, uh, information is a very specific conclusion, it is most probably a generalized conclusion of all the data that you have concluded. You would not say I have taken this particular building, this particular site, that particular building. So if you are pointing, pointing each of this information, storing as different values, then it is a specific information. Otherwise, it is a conclusion of all the data that you may have collected and stored in your GPS and uh, processed in your computer system. Now when we look at data and information, data is about raw facts. Okay? So they may be uh, there most probably most of the data would be of context, okay? but uh, when you look at it, it may be numbers, it may be text, it may be GPS traces, it may be your uh, just in uh, photograph uh, informations or it may be your uh, high altitude, low altitude photographs that you may have taken at that particular of time. But once that data comes into your lab and comes into your system, you connect the data with context. You will say this particular building has is somewhere next to this particular place in this particular street. Okay? So, or it has this, this is the latitude, longitude and this is street and this is where uh, you collected the data. Okay, and data is all of these data, it has seven floors, it has uh, maybe some of those data you would have collected. So it is a data with context. Okay. Then when you look at information, it is the one that is processed after you have got data. So when you look at uh, information, it is most, uh, it is information is at least it is a processed information and the generalized information, generalized conclusion. Normally, informations are value based data, rather than when you look at uh, data, these, these do not have a value, it has to be processed to be a, a get a value. So informations are those which have value base. So that is the difference between a data and information. So when you are speaking next time to anyone, so be careful that how do you define a data, how do you uh, define a information. Okay? So, uh, to, uh, uh, to go ahead with the same thing, data can be any character, number, images, words, so it can be anything. It can be based on records and observations also. Many a times most of the data is collected based on records, based on various information from the governmental records and say uh, certain observations. There may be hundreds of observations that would have people would have done over a period of time and recorded it. 
that can be converted into a digital form that becomes a data. So, this is what uh, we mean by a data. So, when you look at the information, information is an analysis of whatever the data has come, information is organized and processed. So, information is always organized okay, and this and uh, entire and has certain process. So, when we give a generalized structure for this, you have a huge number of uh, data here. Okay, We have a lot of data and when we process it, it forms an information. This is a generalized form of how we say how a data is converted into a information. Now, when we look at a database, now we have understood data. Next is the base, which means to say that it is a storage system where for that particular data. So, when we look at database, database is an organized collection of data stored and accessed from a computer system. A database can also be uh, on a physical records. So, that also can be a database. If for example, the file, uh, for example, there, there are uh, attendance systems in many schools uh, or in many institutions where uh, physically the attendance is marked, that is also a database. Okay, That is a physical records that have been maintained over a period of time. If uh, the same attendance system is maybe put it or uh, maybe put it uh, may, may have been stored in the form of a, a thumbprint when uh, many of institutions now uh, have a sensing system where thumbprints are used to give attendance so that uh, there is uh, no uh, inconsistency in the attendance system. So, uh, if that is the case then you have a digital form of the database. So, you can have a physical form, you can have a form that is stored in the system also, both are called as a database. Okay? And when you look at a computer database, these are more efficient and uh, if, if they have to be efficient, it has to be properly designed. Okay? So, if, if it has to be properly designed, then the correct modeling techniques have to be involved in terms of designing of that particular database. Okay? So, when I say a database, when I so now when I say a database it is where your data is stored to be processed that is nothing but a database as simple as that. Okay? So, you have your attendance system where the, a, a particular teacher or a tutor marks your attendance and that particular attendance may be processed at end of your examination or uh, when, when you write your exams to uh, see how much is your uh, total attendance and whether you have a shortage or not. So, that is nothing but a database. Okay? Now, when if, if the shortage information is given, how much percentage of uh, shortage you have, then it, it means to say that it is uh, nothing but information that is processed and given from that particular database. Now, when we look at a database system, so when I say system, it is the software, hardware, etc. It is the entire system where data comes in, is processed, is then delivered. So, that is nothing but a system. Okay? So, when I look at a database systems, these are normally designed to store large bodies of information. It is, it is an organized body that stores related information. Okay, when I be very, I am very specific here, stores related information, not junk. Okay? In, in addition, it must provide for the safety of information stored. This is very essential in today's context. So, safety of information that is stored uh, is essentially very integral part of database uh, development. If you, are, if you are able to give a, lot, a security aspect to your database, then uh, probably your database would be more secure in terms of uh, illegal uh, surfing that may have happened uh, on your database. So, in the face of a system crashes or attempts to unauthorized access, you may have to save it. So, you may have multiple locations of looking at it or those most of the uh, database now, nowadays are uh, stored in, uh, in the cloud uh, connected systems. So, that uh, any uh, even in the physical systems that are that a user uses if it is uh, if it actually shuts down or if it is uh, under repair or system crashes. So, you will have always have uh, you will not have any issues when you are handling that system and always a backup of that database is made always and uh, 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 maybe a backup on any of the cloud systems are made. So, when you look at database and a database systems, so database is where it is stored, 
it is the way it has algorithms it has uh, the way it has be, uh, to be stored but the database system is a collection of how this database is organized and when we look at data and database system these have become an essential component in everyday life when you look at the for example we encounter several activities for, uh, when we look at interaction of the database very common activity that you may see is for example uh, most of us would have looked at amazon we would looked at uh, flipkart so when you are actually surfing all those items on this amazon flipkart smart deal uh, snap uh, snap deal all this stuff so what are you trying to do is that you are actually accessing their database to look at what are the items that are there uh, for sale okay so different vendors so now you have different uh, vendors each of these vendors have different items for sale and each of these items have their own way of representations okay home uh, own constraints own way of representation own, own policy etc so each of these become a database okay so uh, data in a database so now you have several datas in the database now you select whichever you need you then connect it to the database which uh, where, wherever the amazon server is located so you you talk with the database and say you want to buy this and that once you have connected this it asks for your address that may be stored again in one of the servers of amazon okay or one of the say, uh, one of the cloud systems of amazon so now once that is done then it redirects you to your payment gateway which may be some of the banking servers where again your database is stored so when you are giving your uh, particular upi address or your net banking uh, value it is going into that particular server accessing that database only the things that are visible to that particular uh, server is accessed and when once you give authorization it deducts your uh, whatever the value that has to be deducted so this is how the chain that normally works so that is that is what you are trying to do in everyday life or even if you are to going and trying to look at your mini passbook in an atm and you try to take a print out okay you can take a print out of what, whatever is last 10 transactions so what are you trying to do you are actually trying to access the database collect the information of all the uh, transaction that has happened in last uh, maybe in last 10 transactions that is nothing but you are querying in the database you have stored some information bank has collected data about you has stored certain information here, there uh, based on uh, your transactions and you are accessing that database in order to get that information that is exactly what a database system does a database does and how the information will be okay most of us are involved in this digital era in terms of uh, daily interactions with the database and database system and if you want to look at very good examples of the database system banking system is ex, uh, is a very very good example of a database system you could you could even see that there is there is a lot of issues that is happening sometimes the day they are uh, the system is down maybe there is upgradation or some hack uh, someone has uh, has an unauthorized access to that system there's online railway uh, uh, now if you look at uh, the railway system with uh, the digital network that has improved and the digitization that has improved uh, you can see the previous uh, uh, the railway uh, platform and today's railway platform is much uh, be uh, much better in terms of us user uh, friendliness and how you actually start look uh, booking a particular uh, ticket on that particular uh, uh, IRCTC website. So similarly, different website given have been given an access in order to book that uh, particular uh, railway ticket. It means to say that there are multiple instances which are actually uh, looking at that particular database. So this is this is a wonderful thing of how a database can help multiplicity of users and they, are, they will normally do not have any uh, count or number of users who can get into the database but they look at the security of information the amount of information that has to be leveraged and the amount of information that is necessary for a particular operation to happen similarly when you look at hotel when you look at airlines so all of these have a certain 
uh, ways of interactions of uh, database they are very well known system if you look at your uh, some of the libraries of your uh, schools which are completely computerized wherein you go you look at your, the title of the book and where the shelf it is actually uh, kept so that is one way of accessing your uh, uh, accessing a database of that library of that institution then some institutes have erp and uh, probably in some days uh, it karakpur is going to develop erp for the or most of the institutes across uh, india or a platform that is generalized platform for most of the institute you can see there is an uh, uh, this image is showing the uh, erp system of uh, it karakpur uh, which again entire thing is a database it has student information it has faculty information it has information about uh, different aspects of a, a particular department uh, yeah, certain access is given to certain faculty certain access is given to students there is certain access only to the administrators so this this also uh, uh, is evolving over a period of time and uh, give me, uh, and helping it to become more of a paperless transaction over a period of time so uh, uh, this is one uh, very good example that uh, even iit karakpur is having a very efficient system in terms of uh, erp and uh, other one other very good example is nowadays the, uh, the the online exams that has come up and the results that show up so these are also a good example of how the data is processed as a database and how do you have uh, uh, pro the information in terms of results that would have been processed once we have understood what is a database, what is a database system, now database management system. So you have to manage that database, right? So in order to manage that database, it's a computer, uh, it is a computerized management system. When I say database management system, data management system, okay? So uh, it is an application that helps you to store, retrieve, analyze, sort and print information in a database. So it, it, it can be also called as a software or it can be called as an application to create, maintain and access a database. Okay. So that is called, that is nothing but a database management system. Now data is different, database is different, database system is different and database management system itself is different. So it is an application. So it, you should understand all of these concepts and then only you will be able to handle most of your uh, data in terms of attribute data that you have for any of those calculations that you want to make. Then you have a features of uh, uh, databases. When you look at features of database, the very important features is data independence. So when you look at the entire database, data independence becomes a very important part of any database. So most uh, data that is stored are data are independent in terms of uh, the way they are stored and data integrity so that is another aspect when you look at the integrity of any data is very essential in terms of maintaining the entire database so data integrity becomes a very important feature of the database then you have flexibility then easy accessibility so whatever the example that i give are very good example of easily accessible so when once you have connected to that database through your 4g network you have easy accessibility to whatever the information that you need okay if you need something administrative information definitely you have to go to go to the bank but until unless you are at your own access level so you can get all the information that is necessary uh, which is easily available and most uh, and uh, very important aspect to user is these are very informative in terms of information that is required the big informative uh, database system that you can always most of us always look at is uh, the wikipedia Okay, if you look at the Wikipedia part of it, these are huge number of users who actually maintain the entire database, who edit regularly the database, who add information to the database. Okay, so that is accessed by us as a processed information. So that information is then uh, can be used by any any uh, people to understand uh, what is uh, what is that particular concept. So a very good example of a, a database system. Okay, so when we look at a uh, database management system, uh, we have certain advantage of, of uh, when we look at database also, one is it is non-redundant, data independent, they are not worry, uh, they are not dependent on what kind of data it is, then program usage that is also uh, quite essential, it is advantageous in terms of uh, different programs and usage, then interrelationships is what uh, matters. You when there are a lot of interrelationship among the data, among the database and among various sets of database. 
so it is much easier to handle in terms of uh, relations that exist across the data sets. So, when we look at database and geographical context, so both of these are quite uh, in, uh, related in terms of how they are uh, being processed and when you look at uh, the database, it can contain a geographic data of a particular subject of a particular area. So, when you look at uh, the difference between a database and a geographic data, for example, if we look at uh, this specific thing, they, they are quite related in terms of how they are stored. But uh, when you have uh, data, uh, when you have GIS, it actually links whatever the attribute information you have with the spatial information. Okay, special information is stored in different models. So, you have different models and connected attribute data. So, when you look at attribute data, these are normally flat files or files that may have numbers or just information, quantitative, qualitative data which are there. So, these are just attribute informations. Then uh, these attribute data can be related in form of a relations equal to greater than less than uh, uh, or it is related to something else. So, these are the two things that attribute data may have, but when you look at map data that is in the spatial form has point line polygon, it may have a topology that is built in already, it may have thematic information that has been uh, built or processed over a period of time. So, combining both of these and putting it on the database is nothing but geographic database or GIS database. So, connecting a geographic information with the attribute information or the keys that are there in the entire database is nothing but you are using a GIS database. Okay. We will learn, we will also use, uh, uh, we will create ourselves a particular vector layer, then we will look at uh, how we can manipulate that, uh, then how can we store it as a database then how will we manipulate that particular database, how will you how will you use attribute data to uh, quantify certain things like area etc. Then how do we actually show that uh, attribute data as uh, a, a factor in terms of relating it to your on ground situation. So, all of this we will look at in uh, the practical class uh, when in, uh, we would do an hands on on each of these aspects. And when we look at uh, advantages of database over files the very important advantage is how it avoids redundancy. Okay. Let me go to the next uh, slide, uh, maybe I will show you in my next set of slides which actually tells you what kind of uh, redundancy may happen. Okay. But as of now let us uh, think that the, it avoids redundancy and duplication. Duplication in terms of uh, uh, for example, if you have a file uh, for a particular purpose. Now, you keep on uh, if if the if someone does not know and creates another file in the same context, so that becomes a duplication of the same uh, set of uh, files. If, if the papers are different, it, it is redundant file, but if, uh, if the papers are the same, then it becomes a duplicate file. And when you uh, and redu reduce data maintenance cost, that is very important in terms of maintaining the data. Then faster for very large data sets, if you have extreme with today's computing capability, it is when you have a, a good database designed in good uh, modeling system, then it is extremely faster. Applications are separated uh, from the data, very different applications are different and data is different and database is different. So, applications persist over time, so it, uh, there is no constraint of time then you have support of multiple concurrent applications. So, uh, that is we will look at it, uh, look at how multiple applications can run over a period of time. Then you have better data sharing, ok. So, you can share your data in a better way in terms of access of data and sharing of data. Databases provide extreme flexibility. Security and standards can be defined and enforced. I said uh, in today's context security and standard uh, security is a extremely important aspects of uh, uh, sharing a data. So, then now the concept of standard has also evolved over a period of time. Standard is extremely important in order to have the data. For example, the way first of all the data is saved, where when you are saving it in, uh, in terms of a particular uh, file format. So, those file format have also a standard way of uh, recording that data. So, these are uh, normally under the convention of OGC, Open Geospatial Standards. So, our Open Geospatial Consortium Standards, based on these standards, this data has to be stored. 
okay so if we, if we uh, look at the standards there it has evolved over a period of time and india is actually also looking at how we have maintained enforce the standards in terms of uh, uh, the development of the spatial data and also when we uh, look at uh, the interoperability interoperability of all your data all your tools that you have developed so they need to be interoperable in all the environments in all all different uh, forms so yeah, to make it interoperability you should need interoperable you need certain standards so these are those standards that have also been evolved over a period of time so both of these go hand in hand when you look at both security and standard if standard is maintained uh, there is a, some part of security aspect is also taken care of in terms of development of that particular uh, database and when we look at always any system has certain disadvantages when we look at a disadvantage of a database it is expensive that's that's the uh, maintenance expense so if if you are looking at a uh, long term it may not be expensive but if you are looking at a short term uh, measure database may be quite expensive and complexity involved only un uh, until unless you un uh, you understand it thoroughly about how do you maintain a database what kind of database it is how it evolves over a period of time what is the data that is fed in how uh, you are connecting it with relationship what kind of relationship etc if you are not able to understand uh, as a computer engineer so uh, then the complexity is quite uh, high once you have understood the entire complex database then uh, it may be a uh, just just child's play but until unless uh, it is understood it is highly complex then performance especially the com complex data types handling a complex data type is extremely uh, i mean uh, it's a huge task in uh, and when it comes to spatial data it is really an task that uh, is the order of the day so if you uh, if you are very good at uh, handling complex data in a very big uh, complex database then probably that is the best uh, thing that you can do in terms of GIS. Then integration with other systems can be difficult in many times. So that is why we are uh, now the standards have been developed if uh, it is evolving or it is not quite developed but it is evolving over a period of time at, at maybe in some point of time most of the integration uh, can be done from any system to other any other system. So it is evolving but it needs some time to evolve to uh, get to that extent. So in summary we looked at what is the data, what is information. So we looked at data versus information. We looked what we also looked at what is a database. So we started with data then looked at the database then we looked at what is a database system then once you have looked at the database we also looked at database management system okay. So then we covered how a GIS and a database matches each other how a ge uh, geographical input and a database management system are uh, can be interlinked when i say geographical system it is point line polygon topology or uh, any of those features and when you look at uh, uh, a database it is uh, it is most of attribute data and how the attribute data is interacting with each other through relations so when we combine both of these this forms uh, the geographical database then we looked at what are advantages and disadvantages so when we uh, when we come into the next class probably we will look at more into how a database man management system works and what are the different databases what kind of uh, relationships are there what are different forms of storing your data and how uh, we access this particular data so let's meet in the next uh, session next lecture thank you very much